All right, Kaiser, Northwestern in another really exciting championship game, unlike the Division II one. We already talked about that. But this one uh, was very back and forth. It looked like might have gotten away from the Red Raiders. They come back, make this one interesting. It was certainly a fun game to watch today on a Monday. Matt, tell me about what the hell's up with this random slate on a Monday game <laughs> on ESPN3. I could barely turn the thing on my TV. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, welcome to the NAIA. That's yes. how we do things around yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly impressed because in years past, it's been on ESPN Plus. So the fact that it got bumped up to yeah. one of the, the main networks was pretty sick. I can't lie. Which is got crazy because that actually made it too. more difficult for me to find. I have ESPN Plus, so I was like, <laughs> okay, let me just flip it on. No, yeah. ESPN3 also has a de- dedicated channel on Spectrum. So I have to like, mm-hmm. oh, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. But you did see it. You did I, get I could to see it, actually. It. Yeah, could see okay. It. There you go. Good. Yeah, that's the important stuff. Um, you did miss a, a pretty explosive beginning to this game, though, might I add? Uh, yes. I guess I could start by saying that uh, Northwestern kicks the ball off to Kaiser to start the game. Touchback, normal stuff. One play, Jaden Meisinger, 75 yards. Touchdown. Hell <laughs> Right away. Um, and I think we should not go any further without mentioning that uh, Meisinger easily was the player of the game. 261 rushing yards couple thotties to his name. Yeah. He was pretty much unstoppable this dude, entire game. <laughs> he almost eclipsed 1,400 in the year with today's performance. But the dude is like, I mean, he's an all, he's de- textbook, like all purpose back. He's physical, mm-hmm. but he can get outside. We saw the speed on that one that I just showed there. Like you talk about the opening tud and, and he really does it all for them. And they, like, with that being said, bringing in Burnett, like, they have a great tandem going on mm-hmm. there. Um, not as much of a flashy back he is, obviously being a more of a red zone guy. But, man, they both looked really good. And then here's that kind of questionable safety. I'll have to play that one again. But talk me through that, dude. To start this game off, it was just hectic as hell. Yeah, there was just so much, I feel like, that went on during this game. And then the beginning of uh, – it was either the end of the first half or the beginning of the second half. Like, there was a weird – kick I, I i don't even know i can't even explain it to you no it's just like it's such a Fever blur dream. in my mind because i just could not process what was happening um there were some weird ones in this game i'm not gonna lie to you um there are a lot of explosive plays though i think we talked about it last week for sure in this one that northwestern really likes to get in rhythm you know they kind of do the dink and dunk down field they're very efficient northwestern honestly had to get chunk plays big plays to even stay in this one yeah Kaiser's defense came to play they did, man, and their uh, their front there defensively was so good all day long. Mm-hmm. You saw the the first clip of uh, not was actually wasn't a safety, but uh, I think they actually you know for this offense, especially in the first half, man, limited the big plays like big time. They were not letting them get chunk yards. They're making them fight and earn all those yards. And I think mm-hmm. before we go any further, talk about the man under center for Kaiser. We haven't heard his name called a whole lot this year. Yeah, so um, obviously you talked with uh, Bryce Beasley last week. Great guy. Yeah. Love that guy. Um, was not the starting quarterback in this game because of an injury. Yeah. So we had Justin Wake come in, who QB2 this year, obviously with the Shea Spencer thing, I guess technically you could look at him as QB3. I don't yeah. know. Just kind of a weird situation. But a transfer from Southwest Baptist University, senior, like we have just seen nothing of this guy. But he got it done. He actually was really good for them. He was, you know, taking on that game manager role that he really needed to step into. I was about to throw that out there just to trigger some people because that's been – it's just that phrase and that argument resurfaces every couple of months. And, shit, Mm -hmm. if he's a game manager, I want him on my team because he wasn't making incredibly costly mistakes. He was running their offense efficiently. And when you have a backfield and an offensive line like that that's moving bodies, like what what do you want? Who do you want out there? You know what I mean? Exactly. And he also, not to mention, did have 51 yards rushing. So yep. he like contributed on the ground with big chunk plays. He did throw two picks, but one of them was just an amazing play yeah. uh, by the Northwestern yep, DB in the quarter of the end zone. And, you know, you know, numbers don't jump out at you, but I can promise you he did plenty. And especially when you have, uh, you know, like we said, Meisinger going for 262, 261, whatever it was, yeah. averaging 12 yards a carry. Um, but even then, like uh, Filler, um, Filler, no. God, what's his name? <laughs> Who? Um, Wendell, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Wendell Fillard, uh, number zero, their punt returner. Also DB. That it's guy done. went absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> even on defense, like just sealing the edge, showing off his athleticism. I've been singing his praises for the past couple weeks. And uh, they all came to play. That front seven 
I cannot gush enough about for Kaiser. Like the game plan was to go in there and disrupt what Northwestern had going on. They love rhythm. They love being, you know, picking away at defenses. They weren't able to do that. Jalen Gramstead had to make a lot of plays up on the fly, which he was perfectly capable of handling. We should mention too, like, yes, he had almost 300 yards passing, two touchdowns He's through the air. And also, yeah, 90 yards rushing on the ground. He was, he was playing like the player of the year, which he was named. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah, almost like. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense. Interesting for me, we talk about this offense for Kaiser and looking at just this still frame right here, the typical front for this Northwestern defense, and you got Kaiser, and they're just in a basic spread with a running back off shotgun or like mm -hmm. a, you know, whatever you call it. Uh, like the, man, I'm totally blanking on the sidecar, like a sidecar type deal. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Um, Northwestern, and this was pretty typical for at least, you know, most of this game. Three guys with their hand in the dirt mm -hmm. against a running back tandem that is absolutely carving you up. You've got three guys with their hand in the dirt and then two linebackers that are playing relatively shallow at about maybe four yards. So mm -hmm. not pretty typical. And it's just soft to me. And I know that's they've, they've gotten here. They've obviously done a lot of things right. But again, from an outsider perspective and someone who's played against fronts like this, you love this shit. You got a mm -hmm. big offensive line, just massive bodies up there. Not the most athletic individuals i think watching them play they're not having these guys do too much but i think they work around that they have these guys get double teams on those three down linemen they're getting to the second level relatively quickly they're open up lanes uh for those backs coming out of the backfield and and they were very efficient in doing that and um, i wanted to highlight one of the the better throws for uh for wake here he dropped this one in a bucket dude if you remember they're up <laughs> seven nothing and the yeah. one you had texted me about almost hauled it in here in the uh back corner of the end zone i think it's this next play but he certainly was was flexing the actually a little bit and then had some of the takeaways a little bit later. Um, here it is right here. It's like dropping the back right corner of the end zone, go up for it, and just lost it on the way down. But 14 yeah. zip right there. They go down and score anyways, I do believe. But that would have been, yeah, here you go. I'll do it myself. But <laughs> yeah, man. Amazing great. I mean, that was, that was only the second time I've watched him play. I mean, these being these last two weeks, obviously had seen like the stats before, but obviously – looking mm -hmm. and watching the game is different than looking at a box score. He's fun to watch. He's really fun to watch. And even when he had to get crafty, when they were out of rhythm, like he was making stuff work. There was one where he looked like Patrick Mahomes. Like he like ran to the left, ducked two sacks, like ran down the middle of the field and threw like a, a cross body. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 15 yard pass to his tight end or whatever, or his running back. It was insane. Um, but yeah, it just, it was very obvious that Northwestern was taken aback. They were, not really comfortable on offense. They weren't able to get that hum going off the bat. Um, and Kaiser really just pre uh, preyed on that, like truthfully. Yeah. They were they smelled blood in the water early, and they struck. And obviously Jalen Gramstead did everything he could to bring it back. But, man, that Kaiser team is pretty good. <laughs> Dude, they are. They're, like <laughs> they're I said, I was good. telling you, man, they're, they're very fun to watch. And like you said, I think it starts with getting Gramstead off, you know, off rhythm, keeping the pressure on him. And he is crafty, but damn it, that's when you start making errant decisions, making uh, some uncharacteristically bad throws in some of those situations. And uh, credit to the Northwestern OC, I don't know uh, his name, but tried to, to maybe try to get him to settle down. I think they resorted to that quick game, maybe a little more. You're talking mm -hmm. like little spacing, mesh concepts, yes. uh, hitches, those kind of things just to get some quick completions, uh, some screens. And even on those, like, they're getting back there so quick. He is, I think he was just in the back of his head. His timer was going a little bit quicker than usual. They talk about that timer when you're in the pocket. His was on mm -hmm. overdrive today, and it showed. Uh, I think he was rushing some of those throws, which we haven't seen a whole lot of that from him, a little bit more calculated. And I also did not realize the dude wasn't a quarterback until last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. So take everything I just said with, like, four grains of salt. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing pretty well for himself. That's really um, fucking impressive. Yeah, he's an insane athlete. I think, too, what they what Northwestern really lacked was on the ground. Obviously, Connor McQuillan had a good day receiving almost 90 yards and a touchdown to his name. But Yeah, and the red hair, by the way. Yes, dyed the hair red. Respect it. Yeah, it, it looked great. Um, nine attempts for 10 yards, though. Yeah. That's, that's a presence you really need to compliment Jalen because, obviously – Jalen is going to run for a lot, but he's going to get those big plays through the ground. He's not going to be, you know, carrying the rock and being consistent and gashing away at defenses in the same way a running back would. Yep.
And, you know, again, it's kind of a tale of two halves. But in that first half, the man who wasn't making a lot of plays, you saw the one big catch there, but Michael Story, a guy that's gotten yeah. a lot of pub the last couple of weeks, did a good job of limiting him. In the second half, he caught a couple more uh, balls, and he finished with a pretty good stat line, Matt. Six for 121. Didn't have a score, but I think mm-hmm. he'll take that on the on the big stage. Absolutely. But I think, too, there are a couple uncharacteristic drops. Northwestern, yep. I feel like, was uncharacteris- uncharacteristically undisciplined or at least less discipline than we have seen them yep, in weeks past. You. And, you know, hey, you know, it's the national title. Nerves are getting to you. I I get it. But, like, this is also a Northwestern team that, like, you were in this game last year. You are in this situation. And there's always new parts to teams. But at the same time, you know, got to be got to be ready. If you would have told me before this one, or I guess if I, I flip it on you, if I would have told mm-hmm. you before this one, the two leading receivers for Kaiser would have two catches and three catches for 45 and 37 yards, respectively, what would you have said? I would have said, okay, so they've run for like 800 yards already. <laughs> 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 because that's basically what it boiled down to. You'd be damn close. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Northwestern just had no answer for the, the rushing That was attack. 373. That's, re- that's legit. Insane. Absolutely insane. It's um, no harding, and- but it's damn close. It's damn close, I'll say. And this is this is out of like a modern offense too, yeah, which yeah. I think is super impressive. You know, it's not built for the run per se, but they do it super well. Um, I mean, yeah. Northwestern's defense is, like we've talked about, disciplined. They fill gaps well. They know their assignments. That front line from Kaiser was just getting enough push on them. You know, Meisinger was reading his his blockers very well. Yeah. When they get him it's, out in space there, I mean, he's always almost like outrunning some of his blockers that dude moves. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's tough to get him down, but again, Extremely Kaiser shifty. with four sacks on the day, like those numbers are huge. Um, April Maddox, go get two of those. He had six mm-hmm. tackles forced yeah. fumble as well. on one of those, that was huge. I believe that was when he came around and batted it out. Like that was a, that was a big yeah. time towards the there, end of the so. first half, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're looking at second quarter here, three minutes left, Kaiser 17 yeah. nothing, and you're just starting to wonder, here's the fake punt. That's when that came in, too, and he gets yeah, nailed which that out was, of <laughs> We didn't even mention the fake punt. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, there was, was one of those, and it didn't work, um, no. <laughs> unfortunately. but That was almost like the, the Pro Bowl effort. clip, if you remember. The yeah. Cut, yeah. Oh, that was tough to watch. and. Uh. Yeah, and there's the late onside kick they did not convert on, correct? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. even but, I don't even remember how or why or what no, happened. They, uh, it was just so much. The score thing. before the half was huge for Northwestern. I think that's mm-hmm. when the momentum definitely started to change a little bit. You from yes. if you're going into halftime 17 nothing, that's that's scary. Going in there with the score, all of a sudden now it's a two possession game. You feel like you can have a little bit of control in this thing and um mm-hmm. You know, then you work with that. But, yeah, I mean, it's just – it just wasn't enough. I guess too little, too late for the uh, Red Raider squad and not a result I think a lot of people were maybe expecting, especially with Veasley not at the helm for the the Kaiser mm-hmm. offense. But great teams find other guys to step up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was no – you wouldn't have been able to tell me, oh, this is this guy's first start. Uh, Justin Wake looked like a professional back there, like he'd been running that offense for years. <laughs> yeah. Um, super comfy back there at quarterback. So yeah, I don't have much else to add, man. It was just an impressive showing from Kaiser. They've had a fantastic season, excited to see what a future holds for them. And then obviously Northwestern, another great squad. Always reload very well. Um, So I'm excited to see, you know, maybe we get this as a bit of playoff rivalry type of deal. Cause those are fun back to back national titles. um, And now they each have one apiece. So yeah, the fact that they split is really, is really sweet actually. And Mm -hmm. You know, for a team, for someone, too, looking at this and looking at the Kaiser team that's had two losses, they're like, who the hell has beat these guys? But obviously, remember, those two teams, Mississippi College and I'm blanking on the other one, but it's another Division a Division Two squad earlier in the year. I believe it's Valdosta, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Valdosta State, who, by the way, made it to the national uh, quarterfinals. And then Mississippi they College, they lost a close one, too, didn't make the playoffs, but still a really good squad. I mean, that's... Those are the games that you that you weed out early and you get some of those, you take some of those beatings and now you're more well prepared for a, a squad like Northwestern that kudos to them also scheduled some tough out of conference. The win over Drake, I think, stands out. They talked about that in the broadcast yeah. a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but you just saw after, you know, those two losses to those D two teams, um, 
they learned a lot in the first three yep. weeks of the season. And you could tell they just rolled and rolled and rolled. And it went from close wins and it started to snowball. And they were just beating the crap out of people by the end of the year. And they were playing their best football. They looked immaculate today. Can we talk about the gradient helmets, by the way? <laughs> the light blue to uh, yeah, could we just touch on those quickly while we're, I guess, while we're here. Yeah, you know, I... I can appreciate the attempt at the concept as a creative person myself. I don't. I, I, <laughs> I appreciate as a it. Creative, I don't. As a, <laughs> but it just doesn't doesn't work. I see what we're going for, but like a white helmet, perfect. All whites would have been clean. All whites would have been clean. Been That's clean. all you need. Northwestern's got some. They got some decent uniforms. Nothing, nothing, they're yeah. not trying to do too much. Nothing crazy. I like the stickers. I'm always a I'm always a sticker guy with helmets. I think that's. That's pretty, yeah. uh, it's kind of a gimme, but absolutely. They yeah. have one of those, can, uh, classic uniform combos, you, you know, know, are way too early expectation of these guys, but, um, mm. turnover wise from this, for this next season, I mean, what can we kind of expect from, from these two squads to be interesting if, you know, if we find them in a very similar position a year from now, they're going to be in the mix still. Yeah. Um, I know Northwestern for a fact is going to be back here and I know that guys are as a decent amount of seniors and guys that have experienced that who knows what'll happen. Um, but they'll also be back. They're very well coached. This program has risen up the ranks of the NAI very quickly. They're one of the newer programs. And it's uh, been extremely impressive to see the road that they've taken to get here. Obviously, um, short time they've been around, but they get it done and they look fantastic doing it. Sweet, dude. A lot of good football to come. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that, we'll kind of we'll close out the piece on, on 145. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, brother. We'll have some... Some fun stuff to do this offseason. Probably take a maybe a little bit of a hiatus after the, the championships and wrap everything up. But uh, yeah. nonetheless, appreciate you. It was a fun game to watch today. And I'm, I am very happy, though, whether or not it was a shitty slate or not, the fact that we get three separate times for D3, D2, and NAI, and people that actually Absolutely. in the minority that watch the multitude of them, like myself, can actually sit down and dedicate our all of our Our kind of energy. people. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Our kind of Hell people. yeah. If that's you, you let us know. We need those kind of people. We need more <laughs> of those people. We do. Absolutely. But, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you, man. Have a good holiday. I'll talk to you. Yeah. See ya. See you. Too.